When we talk about an Emirates cabin crew, the first thing that comes to mind usually is light brown uniform and the red hat. A lot of people don't really know that there's also another set of uniform that only very few Emirates flight attendants wear. And that is the dark brown uniform and the dark brown hat worn by the Emirates flight purser. I invite you to join me today as we sit with one of the Emirates flight pursers as we will be talking about her cabin crew journey her leadership experience with Emirates, and also some leadership tips from Janet herself. My name is Mayville, and in our channel, we talk about lessons about life and even in career as well. If you're interested in topics like this, please hit like, click subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. Really, really excited today because for the first time ever, we will be covering somebody, not just, you know, the light brown and the red hat. We'll be interviewing a flight purser. And wow. her name is Janet! <laughs> Hi, everybody! Thank you very much for welcoming me into your lovely home. You really have very nice home. Oh. Your dining table is very pretty. <laughs> I would like you to introduce yourself. Who is Janet? How long has she been with Emirates? And where are you from? Oh, nice! Thanks, my. I should also say thank you so much for inviting me to your channel, for bringing this suggestion about a person and letting people out there know that we also have different uniforms when it comes to our career path. Just to introduce myself quickly, my name is Janet and I'm from Kenya. I have three children, three boys, handsome. And I joined Emirates almost 17 years ago. Wow. It's been a, a path. And before I joined Emirates, I also used to fly in my country. I was a flight attendant for British Airways franchise for about two years. Wow, that's a long time. I don't know if I can do another job. <laughs> this is my life. Yes, it transforms you. you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. There are actually five career paths in Emirates as a flight attendant. So you begin as an economy crew, then you progress into business class, and then first class and then the fourth one would be as a cabin supervisor <laughs> that's a long path long path and then the fifth one and the ultimate role is the flight purser which is also called as the manager of the flight oh yes and that's in flight and in if you flight. want to progress after the flight purser now you go to the next step which is office manager yes and, and oh, cabin crew manager cabin crew manager oh and you forget to mention abinisho oh yes abinisho yeah. as a trainee you are called as an abinisho abinisho yeah Correct. so yes. that's the time that we are training and uh basically those days we used to wear uniforms but now i see that they just wear like yeah. a red shirt and a black pants i think it's better now actually yes. so More you comfortable. can easily move around Correct. yeah yeah yes our training is not that easy guys yeah it's tough, it's, tough. <laughs> yeah, it's bloody i, I told them on my last episode it's bloody oh yes, yes. yes. It's like you're going to the moon <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of going to the moon, yeah. as a flight purser, mm -hmm. it's not an easy path. Have you always dreamt to become a purser? Oh, yeah. When you joined, you said, you know what, I want to be a flight purser. Yeah. So when I joined Emirates, of course, uh, my motivation was to, when I look at my leaders, and I was like, one day I'm going to be wearing this oh, as well. Because yes. those days when we joined, the pursers used to wear navy blue uniform. Yes, so I remember that. Yes. I used to look at them, I'm like, one day I want to be. Anything that I do in my career, I just want to aspire to be the top. I like that. So, of course, there is a process, right? Mm -hmm. You don't just go up there. Mm -hmm. So, you look at the people, use them as your role models, mm -hmm. try to learn mm -hmm. and make yourself better so mm -hmm. you can reach to where you want to be. Yes. I like when you said that you are that kind of person who aspires to go higher. Higher. But you do not just aspire, you do the work. You do the work and right. you go step by step. Exactly. Yeah. Right. How long have you been? A flight purser. I joined Emirates in the year 2004, April to be precise. We joined as a grade two, which means you're working in economy. And like the previous airline where I used to work, you could work in any cabin. So the difference between working for Emirates and other airlines, which I really like when it comes to our airline is you're not just thrown to another grade because they have to train you to maintain that standard and consistency. I worked as a grade two for about two years. Mm -hmm. Again, you have to apply. You have to tell your manager that you aspire to be on the next grade. They look at your performance and see if you're really serious about it. Sick days. Yes. Attendance, yes. mostly sick Appreciation days. letters. Yeah. I went to the next cabin, which is business class. Mm -hmm. 
and that's one we call them grade ones and for grade one i didn't stay for long 15 months oh wow yeah less than two years those days it was easy to upgrade you know Wait. now it's a bit hard there's had, an assessment yeah. there's an exam before you even get to the training yeah and then i went to first class i was in first class it was very short i was in first class for eight months from first class of course i was a cabin supervisor where i stayed forever i got pregnant two times uh, yes. during that yes. time i was okay. i was in that grade however during that time when i was a supervisor i applied to be a person right and i failed two times so the first time i failed i said i wanted to get pregnant again right. so i decided okay let me get pregnant for my second kid mm -hmm. and then i come back and apply again i tried again after the second pregnancy and i didn't get it mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not giving up. Oh, I like that. After they tell you when you fail the first time, we're staying six months before you mm -hmm. apply again. Mm -hmm. And then I reapplied. And now this time around, I think I was ready. I was serious because they encourage you to write all the encounters you go through on board, how you you solve the problems, how you make decisions. You take to your manager, they go through the file, they give you the five competencies, professionalism, right. customer service, and then they tell you, give us examples of all the things that you've done on board to make sure that you're actually ready to be a person. Mm -hmm. And that's even before you go for the person interview, by the way, oh just gosh. for them to put you for the interview. My manager then looked at my file, my portfolio, we call it a portfolio so mm -hmm. she went through it and she said yeah Janet I think you're ready but that time I had like three meetings before she said okay now I'm going to put your name through for the interview and that was the third interview to be a person wow so guys that's how hard it is yes. to be in this position yes how many years did it take me to be but I never ever gave up mm -hmm. and that's what I always tell people mm -hmm. oh. whatever you want in life what if you think it's going to benefit you don't give up. I like that. Persevere. After you pass the interview, so they said you've been accepted to be in the trainee passer program. So if I got it correctly, Janet, before you even get and become a flight purser, you have to undergo an interview first. You yes. have to pass that interview. Yeah. After passing that interview, you have to undergo a purser training. Training. After they accept you, they've given you a letter and said, now you're going to be a trainee passer. Okay. So they put you through six months intensive training <laughs> no sleeping oh my god it's like when you go to university you know you have they give you a project right so we do projects during that six months yes you're, you're put there as a leader but we call it a passer pool right. you're in the pool you're swimming swimming exactly you're swimming. <laughs> you haven't reached the end yet yes so you swim for that six months first you're trained three weeks training in the training school about okay. leadership training okay. And then after that, they send you now to the aircraft. You are on your own. You're on the pool. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're on the pool, the crew look at you and like, oh my gosh, she's on the pool. Because when you you know, you make everything, make sure that everything is done according to yes standards. Standards, correct. So they always panic. Oh my gosh, she's on the pool. What I tell people, if even if you're training, mm -hmm. don't panic. Just yes. give a good environment. Because mm -hmm. the moment you start panicking anywhere in life, mm -hmm. you make more mistakes. Yes. You train for six months. Final interview comes now where you do a PowerPoint presentation of your journey as a pastor in that six months. Okay. And these are a panel of about three interviewers. Mm -hmm. Are so, these cabin crew managers? Yeah, cabin crew okay. managers. Sometimes they send a HR a representative. Oh my God. So anyway, um, I really thank God. I mm -hmm. passed my first final interview because yes. I I prepared guys mm -hmm. my oh. kids I think probably could just see me like a little <laughs> bit because I wanted it yes. I said I'm not gonna fail this one amazing you've you've only spoken a couple of minutes and I already took a lot of lessons yeah one you have to persevere yes. if you want something you really have to work for it yeah. and don't give up no never give very up. inspiring you have to put your heart and your mind into getting exactly it, right and, and then the energy and the energy yeah. that's important as well yeah and the second thing is you have to try and try it's okay to yep. fail as long as you learn and you Thank try God. again yes yes yeah. because other people get disheartened but you yeah. had a fighting spirit you know what I want this I'm gonna go and get it yeah and then number three there's a misconception Janet yep. that being a flight attendant it's just chicken or beef you know that right? <laughs> you, you, you laugh yeah, because yeah. we know it's not bad you know they no. say oh you're a flight attendant you just serve chicken or beef no there's more to that yeah so being a flight attendant even if you're in economy business and first or cabin supervisor you undergo a lot yeah and by understanding that a purser actually undergoes a blood if it's like a war it's a bloody war <laughs> right you. so getting out of that must have been victorious oh, I yes. want to know what did you feel when after the third try you finally got it you finally passed after everything what did you feel 
the first impression, I actually wanted to take some tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Better be a strong one. <laughs> no, the feeling was, I think sometimes when you do something so much, you have mixed reaction. Mm -hmm. How do I behave? Should I scream? Should I cry? <laughs> should I laugh? <laughs> what should I do? So first, you know, I was so excited. I was so happy. And usually in my life, I give thanks to God. Okay. Whenever I get Aww. something, what I've prayed for, first and foremost that I do, give thanks. Gratefulness. Gratefulness. I have a grateful heart. I was like, thank you, God. Of course, depending on what you believe in, just be grateful. After that, I decided, let me go and sleep today. <laughs> Finally, just, after so many months. I just needed to rest. Yeah. And then tomorrow, it will sink in my head that I'm not on the pool anymore. <laughs> so the next day, my family, everybody was so happy for me. That's the most important thing is we do graduation. Yes. Oh. The whole celebration. When you go up there in that podium, in that auditorium, and get your certificate, say you've passed and you're now a passer, you know, I don't even know how to explain. There's a different feeling. Because this is what you wanted. This now, I felt like I've reached the top of my career. I love that. Because I wasn't expecting, I wasn't planning to go to a different step because I've always wanted to work in an aeroplane. So I was not looking forward to working in an office. So I felt like, you know, I've really gone through these stages in life and now I'm just at the top of my career. Yeah, nice. My kids yeah, came nice. for graduation. The twins? Yeah, everybody. My everybody. big son, my friends. Mm -hmm. It was such, such a joyful a nice. celebration. Yeah, it was such a nice yes. feeling. When you applied as a purser, you had an image of what the roles are. And then here you are, finally a flight purser. Mm -hmm. Are they different or are they the same? Were the expectations met? Expensive. Apart from the salary, because I know you guys are paid well. <laughs> you guys oh are paid my God. well. How was it carrying that burden? Because That's it's a lot. <laughs> it it's is a lot. lot. 